We only have 30 days before school starts and only 30 days to sell back to school pencils. If we can't get them engraved and personalized, shipped and delivered before school starts, then we won't have happy customers and they won't be back next year. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, Builder, to make it? So do we. We have new videos each week. We have so many tips and tricks inside Lightburn today. I mean, we're gonna get deep into some Lightburn things that will really help you save time, keep things efficient, and keep things repeatable. These are some tools that we hadn't really seen before or used before. We just learned about them, and I'm really excited to show you. This is the perfect project to show you on what they can do and how you can use them. I think you're gonna be able to use them in making those ornaments this Christmas. <laughs> Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed some pencils because we're engraving on pencils. Now you can use any pencils, but I think we all know that the Ticonderogas are the best pencils, but they're just yellow. So at your local Walmart, you can get this pack of pastel pencils, 12 of them, super cheap, and they engraved great. We know Kim is a pencil connoisseur. I am. Only the best for Kim. <laughs> We also needed some quarter inch MDF. This is what we're gonna cut our jig out of. We have quarter inch because we have a lot of quarter inch. You but can you can do it in acrylic. Yeah, go ahead. No, oh, yeah, you Sorry, can do it. You can really use anything. You can use acrylic, you can use eighth inch, Baltic birch, you know, even cardboard, whatever you have laying around, mm -hmm. you can create a jig out of. And that is it. Step two, we're gonna make our jig. The jig is not up. We have to go make it right now. <laughs> and we're gonna do that inside light burn. Here we are on Lightburn. I'm excited to show you some cool things. We're gonna start by drawing out our pencil shape. We're gonna do that by using our rectangle tool. I'm just gonna draw a shape. And since I know exactly what size I need, I'm gonna come up and make sure my aspect ratio is unlocked. And for the width, I need 7.75 inches. And for the height, I'm gonna go 0.3 inches. And because all of my cuts are done on the red layer, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the red layer while it's still selected. Now I'm gonna use the array tool to give me a 12 pencils high, three pencils wide. So I'll click my little array tool while it's still selected. And we'll say three columns. And then for a Y, we'll say, whoops, not 21, 12. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit using my scroll on my mouse. And uh, the spacing looks fine. I think I'll bring them a little closer together. And a little closer together. That's it. Good to go. I'm gonna center my workspace again back out. Now let's draw some registration marks. We're gonna use these registration marks later on to line up our engrave. Let's zoom in a little bit because I'm going to make a tiny little circle. Now with my circle tool selected, I'm just going to drag a circle over. I'm going to hold shift so it keeps it a circle circle. Now I want this only like a half inch tall. So I'm going to lock my aspect ratio and we'll say 0.5. I need some crosshairs in here. I need it to look like a target because we'll be lining up a target later on. So I'm going to use my pencil tool. I'm going to click, and while I'm dragging down, I'll hold shift. And I'll click again, and I have this thing that's all floating around. I'll hit escape. It gets me out of the pencil tool. I'm going to just use my select. I want this to be 0.75, three quarters of an inch. I'm going to do control D to duplicate it. Now I'm going to hold shift while I rotate it on its axis and I'll snap on the like 15s. I'm going to grab everything now and we'll come up here to this little bullseye thing which will align center and vertical or horizontal and vertical. And let's group it so it stays together. Control G. Now this is going to be like a deep engrave, but I want to turn it off later. So let's go ahead and put this on the green layer. And I'm going to go ahead and control C to copy. And I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to use my scroll button to zoom in and out. 
I'm going to come back down to the right hand side down below. So now it's going to paste center of wherever my cursor is. So control V. Now I got one down here. Just line that up on the edge. Now if I if I press my scroll key, I can grab the canvas and move it. So it gives me a little hand. Let's just move this guy down here. Now I want to be able to cut this whole little jig out and move this jig around with me. Take it with me wherever I go. So <laughs> let's cut this whole little jig out. And let's make this part of the cut layer. Put that back on the cut layer. Alright, now while I'm carrying this jig around town, I don't want to forget what this jig is, so I'm going to write up top what this jig is. So this is for back to school pencils. I made it a really long jig name. I'll just kind of center it over here. Let's throw this on the green layer because it's going to be a deep engrave. All right, that is it. That's our jig. So simple. So simple. All right, let's cut this guy out. Let's set my parameters real quick. So I'm going to use a 130 watt laser, so I'm going to go 10 millimeters a second. We're cutting this out of quarter inch MDF. 10 millimeters a second. So we'll do a 50% power. 50% power. Now for my score, I'm going to want to go like 200 millimeters per second, and we'll say 30% power because I want a pretty deep score. I probably want to score this before I cut it. So let's move that up. All right, let's go cut this out. I'm gonna take the quarter inch MDF over to the Eon Nova 14, and we're gonna cut out our jig. Now you can make your template any size you want. You can do this in a desktop laser. You can do one set of 12 pencils, whatever will fit in your laser. This is pretty flexible. I've seen this done on the F1, the Ultra, F1 Ultra. Uh, any of the P2s. Any S1. I've even seen it done on the D1. Yep. So you can do this with any laser that you have. Step three. It's time to create our template. Now that we have our jig, we're going to do a jig over to Lightburn to make our template. Now we're ready to make our template. So we're gonna start with a spreadsheet. Here we are, we've created this spreadsheet, pencil names for template.csv. We want this a... Uh, this needs to be a CSV, not an XLS. It needs to be comma delimited. Yes. So here, let's say we have orders for three different name sets of pencils, Garrett, Kim, and Tanner. And we're gonna make this mirror our template. So we've got them in three columns, Garrett, Kim, Tanner. We're going to copy those down. We've got 12 rows. So now Kim gets 12 pencils. Tanner gets 12 pencils. For Garrett, I'm going to add a number here so that we can use this for demonstration purposes because we're going to show you some offset values here in a moment. All Perfect. Right. Yep. So we'll save this now. Yep. Let's go back to Lightburn. Back to Lightburn. And now we're going to make, so this is our jig. We're going to make this so we're not going to cut this, I would say. Take that red layer and make it no output. That's right. No output for both red and green. All right. So now this is just going to be set up for our engraved portion of this project. So we can see it, but it's not going to cut. It won't send it to the machine. Next, we're going to create some variables and put those on top of the pencil. So we're going yep. to do that. I'm going to go over here to my text tool. So we're going to create some text. We'll just zoom in on my pencil and we'll click. And to create a variable, I'm going to start by using my percent. And then we're going to use the first space that's available at, for a variable, which is zero. So this is, this is going to represent the column in your spreadsheet. So now we'll shrink this down to fit on the pencil. And we'll just do it this way. Make it 0.17 inches high. We'll zoom in. I want to leave about an inch and a half from the end of the pencil to where the words start. So we'll miss the eraser and uh, it won't look like the words are right up at the top. So to do that, I'll draw a little box. We'll just, what's this? Oh, about an inch and a half. Great. We'll just make it an inch and a half. And we'll put this on the green layer. 
Ooh, I can barely see it. I'll show the output for now so I can see it. Move my text over. Now I'm going to try to center this text on here, but my keys make it go too far. And if I hold shift, it goes really far. But if I hold control, I get smaller movements, but I still not small enough movements. So I'm going to go up to my settings over here where it says shape move increments. I'm going to change mine to 0 0.01. Okay, now I'm going to hold control and it really moves about a pixel. Now up here, I'm going to change some things for my text. This is like for my text. So if I click off, you see it goes gray. If I click it, it comes back. First, I want to align left, not center or middle. And then we're going to set this text to merge CSV. I'm going to use my array tool to populate my pencils. So back to my array tool. So now we're going to use one column uh, because it's this column zero, this is going to be the Garrett pencil. And then we're going to have 12 rows. And then we're going to align those on the pencil. So I'll just change my Y spacing until it gets close. Oh, that's way too big. It's way too small. Say 0.29. That's pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. We're cool with that. And then right here, you'll see that we have auto increment variable text one. So this is going to represent the rows on your spreadsheet. So because we're going to use 12 rows, it's going to auto increment each row. So that's why we've kept the numbers here. You're going to see how those populate here in a moment. We'll say OK. And now we'll duplicate these. We'll grab. Holding shift, I'll grab my little uh, green spacer here and I'll say control D. Now, let's say I had clicked off. Yeah, because I see you purposely kept it, kept it selected. You were you knew what you were doing. Yeah. But when I did this, I did not keep it selected. What's your little trick for selecting all the rows without selecting the actual pencils? Oh, well, here, let me finish dragging this over. So while I'm dragging this over, I'm holding shift so it stays on this line. It doesn't really move when I jiggle my my cursor. So if I needed to select everything here, let's say we accidentally ungrouped it, right? It's ungrouped. And I need to select everything real quick. There's two ways I can do this. One, I can drag from the top left to the bottom right, which will only select everything it encapsulates. Or I can turn off show red and then I can grab everything and I can bring back the red and then I can group it again. Good little tip. So I said we're going to ungroup this. Actually, control Z, let's not ungroup it yet. Let's grab this guy. We're going to duplicate this one more time. I'm going to drag it over, hold shift. Now, this is probably the most tedious part. I'm going to ungroup. And uh, in here, I'm going to turn all of these to one. Let's just. Well, this is one way to do it. How would you do it? I would do the array again. You did a great job. You know what your spacing is. You should be able to just create percent one and array it one more time. You know what? She's right. Let's do it that way. So I'm going to hide this red. I'm going to grab these. We'll say ungroup. I'll grab these again. Delete. I'll grab this guy. Hit my array. I know it's 12. Well, wait, you need to make it a three. Uh, I mean, a two for yeah. column two, oh, column three. Oh, good catch, babe. Double click. So again, Please the percents two. here are representing the different columns. So Garrett, Kimberly, mm -hmm. this is Tanner, zero, one, two. All right, now we'll array it. We'll say 12. Let's bring back the red. Yeah, Ooh, look looks at there. good. All right. Let's uh, group all these guys again. Group. 
Now let's um, test this out. Let's see. I have all of my variables set. So we'll go over to our variable text tab. And if you don't see your variable text tab, you can come up to window and then down at the bottom, a variable text. And I'll open this window. We're going to start by browse. We're going to load our CSV file. And now since I have everything set up, I can use this little button here to test. There you go. Now you see that Garrett over here, let's zoom in, is actually reversed. Because when we use our array tool, it starts at the bottom and works up. It works up and to the right. So your increments will go up and to the right. So if you wanted Garrett to have six pencils and somebody else to have six pencils, you can change those rows to another name. But no, they work bottom up. So we'll say Sarah. And we'll just say zero. I'll drag it down. We'll save it. Actually, let's change Tanner too. Let's go Court. We'll drag it down, save it, browse, open it up again so it'll load, and let's test. There you go. So now you can see Garrett work from bottom up, and then Sarah, where the six at the top now, she went bottom up. All right, so let's set this all so that it looks it looks correct, so we'll clean this up real quick. Drag them down, save, browse, load it, test it. All right, let's go back to our, our layers. And I'm going to want this layer here, my black layer, this is going to be fill. Fill, I want 600 millimeters per second and 50% power. Don't forget you're going to not output your green oh, layer. That's right. And we're not going to output the red or green layer. So I'm going to make sure both of those are deselected. Now, this is where I will save this template as a light burn file now. Step four, time to make all of our cuts. Well, not all of our cuts, the rest of our cuts. And we're going to use the print and cut feature inside Lightburn. So I'll meet you back over in Lightburn Kim is going to do a jig on over. Here we are back in Lightburn. Now we're going to engrave our words, but we're going to use a really super cool and easy tool that even comes with a wizard. So there's a little button right here for print and cut. And if you don't see it here, you can always go up to laser tools and print and cut. You can go to your wizard. So let's zoom in a little bit. All right, because I'm going to want to get to these two registration marks or targets. So let's start our wizard. And it's going to ask me to set our first target position. So we're going to think we're going to make this one our first target. So I'm going to select this target and I'm going to say set. Now I'm going to go out to the laser and I'm going to line up my red dot pointer. So it's directly in the center of this target. I'm going to try to hit those crosshairs right in the center with my laser head. Get that red dot dead center. Now we'll load all of the pencils into the jig without moving the jig. I'm going to check it just to make sure it's still dead center. Now we're going to move the laser head to the center of the other registration marks or the center of the other target. I'm going to jog the machine. I'm going to use my arrows on my X and Y axis to line up that red dot pointer in the center of that second target. Now, if you have to, like I have to, I bring the speed way down. I do one millimeter per second so I can get it dead center of that target. Now back in Lightburn, I'm going to select the second target position here and I'm going to go up here where it says set second target position. And now we're just going to click set. So now I have two options. 
I have align outputs scaled. This could skew my image or the words. So we're gonna want no scaling. Now when it sends the coordinates to the laser, it's gonna send them using these two as the base. So I'm gonna select everything here. And because these aren't outputs, they should be good to go. So that's how you create a template. I can use this over and over again. I'll just simply go in, change the names in my spreadsheet, come back to Lightburn, <laughs> realign my print and cut, set my targets, and click start. I don't have to change anything on this ever again. I'll just simply align my targets and change my spreadsheet. Super repeatable. Step five, profit. So each pencil costs about a dime. That's 10 cents. And you sell a 12 pack for about $12 and to engrave 12 pencils took about one minute. They were so easy to do. They were so fast. I really have enjoyed it. I've got some funny sayings. I'll show more details over on Patreon uh, where I won't get demonetized for some of them. <laughs> And I can't wait to do more. I had some really great ideas for packaging. I didn't get a chance to get those printed, but my suggestion is, and what I'm seeing all over Etsy too, uh, you can print or even engrave some cardstock. You just run a little back to school engraving on it or even print on. Just find something out of Canva. Right, a little graphic right on some white cardstock. And then they're putting all 12 and just wrapping them in washi tape. And then we were going to shrink wrap them. You could also buy the little cellophane bags and send them in those. And they're just a cute little gift that you can give right here before school starts. It's just a fun little, fun little gift. And it's super great profit margin for you. It is. And we'll get deeper into that CSV merge in Lightburn over on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon... Big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys, and that is the best way to support this channel. Now, if you guys want to see Kim do her jig, we can get to that, because I am about out of time. So if you're not going to stick around for Kim's jig, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. All right, ready? Is it time to make all your cuts? That's my jig. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, ready? Mm -hmm. Now that we have our jig all set, wait, this isn't, this is a print. Now that we have our jig, we're gonna do a jig over to Lightburn to make our template. <laughs> do not put that in there. It's totally going in. <laughs> Please don't put that in there. I almost didn't do it. Please don't put it in there. <laughs>